Okay, thank you for your introduction. I also thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to give a talk on a recent work. So this is my first time to give a scientific talk in India. Actually, India is the first country I visited in my life in 1996 with uh, some other high school students, including uh, Yuji Tachikawa. Uh, so we spent eight days in Mumbai, whose name has just been changed. More than 25 years later, recently my first paper with Yuji, with, along with his friends, has been published. So this is advertisement, not the main story today. But uh, sometime after returning to Japan from Mumbai, as an undergraduate, I started watching Indian movies between studying physics, starting from Tamil movies like Bombay, then going also to Hindi films, as well as to Kannada films like Upendra, directed by Upendra, if you know. So far, I think I have spent more time watching Indian movies than staying in India, because I have not yet visited India for the second time. In the last few years, however, I have attended online several ex excellent seminars and workshops organized in India, many of them at ICTS. So by the end of this stimulating program, I think I have attended more physics talks in India than the number of films I have watched. Anyway, the work I am presenting today is with a physicist whom I have known even longer than Yuji, who is none other than Masanori Hanada, one of the organizers, and the chair of this uh, session, as well as with uh, Onur Oktai at Sari, and Enrico Nardi and uh, Franco Nori at Riken and the University of, of Michigan. So uh, also I would like to acknowledge my collaborators in this related project. So my take home message is the following. We propose the binary coupling sparse SYK model in which four out of n Magellanic fermions interact with a coefficient plus or minus one at some probability p. We numerically observe that this model ob obeys random matrix eigenvalue statistics when the number of non-zero couplings is at least as, uh, about as many as the number of the Magellanic fermions, which corresponds to p on the order of n to the minus star. So in this talk, I introduce the such the pH type model first and the spectral form factor, which quantifies its random matrix like eigenvalue statistics, and then discuss Gaussian, binary, and unary coupling sparse SYK models. So the such the pH type model was proposed by Alex H. Taif in 2015. And the model can be defined both for complex and Magellanic fermions. The Magellanic version which we call SYK4 model because four out of n fermions are interacting with a Gaussian random coupling constant is defined like this. We can consider, for example, six or eight fermion interactions and define SYK6 and SYK8 models, for example. The model can be solved in the sense that the random coupling average uh, of a uh, correlation function uh, can be exactly obtained in the large n limit. I will comment uh, more on this uh, in a while. Uh, and uh, the model has attracted much attention as maximally chaotic model uh, with holographic correspondence to one plus one dimensional gravity, like dense random matrix. We have about n to the fourth divided by uh, 24 random couplings in the model, like this. And uh, there are now more than 1,000 uh, papers and reviews from various viewpoints including high energy theory and condensed matter theory. So to illustrate better what the SYK model looks like, let us consider here a single term of the 10 Magellanic fermion SYK model. Here, Q equals four means uh, that four fermions are interacting in, in each term. And uh, we can combine two Magellanic fermions to create a Dirac fermion. In the, uh, here, uh, zero, one, two, three, four. So five qubit. Then uh, each uh, qubit or direct uh, complex fermion uh, can take states zero and one. So there are 32 states, two to the fifth in the fourth space. Uh, so here uh, we use a five dimensional hypercube uh, to the direction zero, one, two, three, four uh, to represent the, the fourth space. And each Magellan fermion flips the complex fermion state with a different phase depending on 
with that you have a fermion A or B, Manuel fermion A or B, for example. And so this particular term, uh, J, A, C, E, G, K, A, K, C, K, E, K, G, uh, connects, they all hops apart on the five-dimensional hypercube representing the 32-state many-body hop space. So it connects two states, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, as well as other 15 pairs of states. So uh, this SYK model realizes the same low energy behavior as the such that Ye model proposed much earlier in the large end limit. Actually, the Dirac fermion version of the SYK model has also been known in a different name in the nuclear theory context, the two-body random ensemble that has been studied for over 50 years now. So the possibility to study quantum gravity by holographic correspondence has attracted renewed attention in this system of in the last uh, seven or eight years, and there are now many variants of the SYK model. Let me mention that if the holographic principle even holds true in quantum systems, quantum gravity can be studied by experimentally realizing the SYK model. After a proposal to realize the SYK model using ultra cold fermions in optical lattice, several proposals have appeared such as using the Majorana fermions appearing in the holes of superconducting films uh, deposited on the surface of a three-dimensional topological superconductor and using graphene flakes with an irregular boundary. In 2019, a paper demonstrating the experimental realization of SYK model with eight Majorana fermions using NMR technology has been published. So this uh, SYK model is said to be solvable uh, in the following sense. In the large M limit, quantities such as the two-point function uh, can be exactly calculated after sample average. To see this briefly, let us see non-perturbative Hamiltonian equals zero and consider the Feynman diagram expansion with the SYK Hamiltonian as perturbation. The free two-point function with the uh, is, uh, diagonal in the Majorana fermion index in the following, the product of two couplings, uh, two couplings uh, like this averages to zero at least if at least one of the indices is different. So most diagrams average to zero. We can show that only a certain type, Menon type of diagrams survive like this uh, after we take the average of our couplings in the large end limit. Uh, by comparing these two diagrams as examples. So the first diagram averages to non-zero if the two couplings are the same. So for each i, the number of non-zero diagrams is on the order of n to the third, which is then multiplied by the overall coefficient, uh, this one squared, which is n to minus third. So the contribution of this type of diagram is order one. On the other hand, uh, in the diagram to the right, JKL has to be equal to J prime K prime L prime as a set, and M can also be chosen. So there are on the order of N to the fourth, uh, but there are four couplings. So the overall constant is on the order of N to minus six. So the contribution is one over N squared. In such a way, we can show that the Melon diagrams as uh, in the figure to the left, dominate in the last end limit. Then we can obtain various green functions of the system and discuss the low energy behavior of the model. There are now several works connecting the zero plus one dimensional such FA and such FA type model, one plus one dimensional uh, JT gravity, and random matrix, which are uh, maximally chaotic fast scrambling system. There are different classes of random matrix models, but the type corresponding to the SYK model is the Gaussian random matrix, which I explain briefly in the next slide. This may be rather technical, but Gaussian random matrices are Hamishan random matrices with each independent matrix element obeying Gaussian distribution. The pro, uh, joint probability density function is written like this, with beta equals one, two, four uh, for real, complex, and quaternion matrix elements. 
the joint distribution function for all the eigenvalues of this matrix. Uh, so there are k matrices and j matrix eigenvalues uh, is uh, shown to be written like this. And the separation to the beta power indicates that uh, energy levels repel each other, but the strength of the repulsion depends on the ensemble type indicated by beta. So the distribution of the normalized level separation in the left plot is in proportion to s to the beta power for small distance, and the tail is suppressed uh, as Gaussian, unlike in the uncorrelated case where the distribution is exponential as in the, this orange line. Also, the average of the ratio between the neighboring uh, energy separations takes larger value as we go from uncorrelated to GOE, GUE, then to GSE, which indicates that the levels are more correlated and equally separated with each other. We can numerically check that the level correlation of the S by K model obtained by uh, exact diagonalization is indistinguishable from corresponding Gaussian ensemble determined by symmetry. So there are various ways to quantitatively study the spectral correlation over more than a few eigenvalues, but there, uh, here we focus on the spectral form factor. And the spectral form factor is defined using the partition function analytically continue to uh, imaginary inverse temperature, which is uh, basically the Fourier transform of the energy eigenvalue spectra. So we take the average over the samples, and uh, we can show that if the energy spectrum has long range correlation, like in uh, Gaussian random matrices, we have the so called slow, deep ramp plateau structure with the ramp linear in time t, as you see here for the uh, n equal 34 SYK model. So this slow at the, at the early time corresponding to large energy scales is dominated by the disconnected part average of z squared, uh, that is dependent on the overall shape of the density of states. The RAM is dominated by the connected path GC, which is basically the Fourier transform of the second order correlation of density of state fluctuation. So how early this uh, RAM that should quantify the amount of long range correlation in the spectra. The shape of the crossover to the late time plateau depends on the symmetry. For the SYK model, if we plot the spectral form factor for a series of values of n, we observe that the ramp becomes exponentially longer as n is increased, and that there is a clear n modulo 8 pattern in the late time behavior. So far, I have talked about the original SYK model with Gaussian random all to all four Majorana fermion couplings. Now, let us uh, start looking into how we can simplify this model, retaining the random matrix-like energy spectrum statistics. So in 2019, Brian Swingle proposed a sparse version of the SYK model in which the coupling is a Gaussian random at probability p and zero otherwise. If the number of non-zero couplings, KCPL, is too small, some products of fermions commute with the Hamiltonian, and there will be no random matrix behavior. Surprisingly, if the number of independent terms reaches around n, random matrix-like behavior appears, and non-zero entropy per fermion at low temperatures is observed, which is expected for models uh, holographically corresponding to black holes. So this corresponds to the probability of non-zero couplings on the order of n to the minus third, so this is very, very sparse. The important thing in the diagrammatic expansion for the usual dense SYK model is that the product of two Gaussian distributions is Gaussian. Looking at the sparse SYK model, I thought as following. If you take the product of two probability distributions that are Gaussian plus delta function, you obtain a distribution function in the same shape. So much if not all of the arguments for the fully connected SYK4 can be reused. However, 
the product of two distribution functions that are plus or minus one is again plus or minus one. Then we can make the distribution pass in the same way. So we can uh, take the Hamiltonian like this, uh, with chi being the Majorana fermion. And then uh, we observe that uh, we, we have shown that we observe random matrix statistics for the number of non zero terms only as many as the fermion. So I note uh, that the effect of taking a non Gaussian distribution of the coupling uh, in dense SYK has also been studied in this paper, by the way. So uh, may we have uh, too few couplings. As I said, uh, we find that there are uh, imagined contact quantities. And that is, uh, some operator products commute or anti-commute with the Hamiltonian, which was uh, already known for Gaussian uh, space SYK. An almost trivial example is that if two Majorana fermions in the system actually do not appear in the Hamiltonian at all, then uh, we can combine them to form a qubit whose state does not change the energy. So there will be a twofold extra degeneracy. By the way, uh, for the binary model, by taking the overall uh, scaling constant to be one over square root of number of couplings, we can set the variance of uh, the eigenenergies to unity, which uh, we do in the following. So as a function of the number of couplings, KCPL, uh, in the horizontal axis, we have plotted the observed proportion of samples without extra de degeneracy. We observe a clear n modulo 8 pattern, and if this KCPL exceeds the number of fermions n, over half of the samples do not have extra degeneracy. For samples without extra degeneracy, we have plotted the average of the neighboring gap ratio, and we observe that it rapidly approaches the random matrix value after KCPL equals n. So uh, for example, for uh, n equals 24, uh, we approach GOE, then 26, uh, GUE, 28, GSE, and 30, GUE again. For n equals 28, and 30, we plot the spectral form factor. We observe a clear T linear ramp, which coincides with the dense case as uh, n is increased. So from 8 to 40, we have uh, curves from here to here, approaching the dense case. In the computation of the spectral form factor, the slope part at early time depends on the overall shape of the density of state, including its tails, uh, where the eigenvalues are further apart. So the slope uh, hides the initial part of the ramp. So in order to suppress the effect of the slope hiding the onset of the T linear ramp, in this paper, we proposed introducing a factor alpha and finding the value of alpha that gives the earliest onset of the ramp. So for example, for dense uh, Gaussian SYK, we tried plotting this uh, modified spectral form factor defined using this alpha to find the earliest starting time of the RAM, which is almost constant for a wide range of the system size n. For details, please take a look at our paper. In the present case, with binary, sparse, uh, binary coupling sparse model, the density of state has almost an identical shape uh, when uh, KCPL, the number of couplings, is changed. So we plotted the modified spectral form factor for a constant edge separation factor, uh, alpha equals unity. Then uh, the onset of the ramp for the binary coupling uh, sparse model is as early as that of the Gaussian coupling uh, model with twice as large KCPL. So for example, for binary KCPL equals 28 is here, which is similar to Gaussian KCPL is uh, 56, and similar for n equal 30, 30 and 60, coinciding here. And with KCPL equals uh, 4n, like uh, 112 and uh, 120, the curve almost overlaps with that for the dense model. 
So the binary coupling model is very efficient in producing a random matrix like rigid energy spectra. As the number of fermions becomes larger, we observe that even by looking at uh, just one realization of the model, we observe random matrix like statistics. We give one example here for n equals 34, where for constructing a dense Gaussian SYK, we need more than 46,000 terms with random coefficients. We randomly chose just 36 terms here and set coefficients as plus one for 18 of them, uh, minus one for the rest, and observed these uh, GUE statistics. Let me comment that we can choose the non-zero couplings just to plus one at probability p and zero at minus uh, one minus p and obtain very similar statistics. And this is because by reordering Majorana fermions and Majorana fermions, about half of the signs would be flipped. We have numerically checked this in our paper. So recently, in other collaborations, I have studied the case with a random two-body Hamiltonian SYK2 is added to the SYK4 model. We computed the Lyapunov exponent and the spectral statistics to show that the chaotic behavior is lost at finite strength of the SYK2 term. And then in these two papers, uh, we showed that the transition is a kind of many-body localization transition but the bipartite entanglement entropy as a function of delta shows a non-trivial plateau as a function of delta. Also, we have studied the quantum error correction by the time evolution with a SYK like model using the Hayden Presti protocol. The question here is how long it takes for the Hamiltonian dynamics to scramble quantum state or delocalize a given quantum information like hard random unitary. For the binary coupling sparse SYK uh, my, uh, that we have proposed in this talk, the time is as short as uh, in the Gaussian coupling dense SYK. But for the SYK 4 plus 2 model uh, above, uh, the SYK term suppresses the scrambling uh, effect even at long times. More details will be on archive soon. Uh, another interesting topic is to conduct quantum simulations of the SYK-like models, and we expect that it would be more efficient than in previous models uh, using a proposal because we need a smaller number of terms with a fixed coupling constant. So my talk is summarized here. Thank you very much for your kind attention. There. Question, comment. Uh, hi. Uh, what is that ramp representing in the spectral form factor physically? Sorry. Uh, yeah, ramp in the spe spectral form factor. What the, what that represent physically? Ramp. Yeah. Then you play it down. Play it you. Play it down. Ah. Uh, okay. So. Uh... Ramp represents the correlation. So uh, if the eigenvalues just randomly uncorrelated with each other appears, then uh, we expect no uh, going down and uh, coming back. So at long time, uh, so if you see a very small scale, then uh, you only see uh, the correlation, uh, the degeneracy of the uh, eigenvalues. But if you uh, change the energy scale to larger and larger, then uh, because of the random matrix statistics, the eigenvalue is uh, appearing at uh, more or less uh, some, uh, under some rhythm, rhythm uh, period, kind of rhythm, uh, periodically. Okay. You are seeing that effect. So in the case of a random, uh, sorry, a Gaussian unitary ensemble, uh, the correlation between the fluctuations of the density of state is written like this. So that's a sine square factor. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other question, 
Angel. Sorry, I, I, um, I was intrigued by your early slide on the Hager up conformal field theory. Where does this crop up in here? Sorry. Yes, uh, you, you mentioned that. This, uh, uh, this is uh, on PRL. Oh, uh, it's, it's not related to the same model. Uh, no, not directed to the same model. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, I was surprised. Okay. Right, thanks. Sorry. Okay. Oh, thanks for the nice talk. Um, I have maybe a, a silly question, which is maybe how to look at how sparse you can possibly go with this connection to uh, quantum simulation, trying to get the number of degrees of freedom as small as possible. You've mentioned that order one couplings is too small to see random matrix like behavior, but order n is enough. Is there uh, any sharp bound on how things need to, to scale, like would square root n be a possibility to explore that might make things smaller for quantum simulations? Okay, so in studying the SYK model, some people take the uh, so-called double scaling limit. So both n and the number of uh, fermions coupled in each term, q, uh, both goes, go to infinity. But uh, if we uh, limit the discussion to q equals four or some constant, then uh, you need uh, like n over eight uh, terms to couple everything, every site on the FOP space. So, so this is uh, like a hyper, uh, uh, so uh, if you see, if you look at the fermions, if you look at n fermions, the system looks like a hypergraph, but uh, if you look at the uh, Fox space uh, states, like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, or 1, 1, 1, 1 0, then it, it is just a graph, usual graph. Then uh, if the number of terms is too small, then uh, some part is disconnected like this. So here, uh, only two states are uh, connected by each term. So you need uh, order n uh, terms to connect everyone. Thanks, that's very clear. Thank you. Uh, can I ask a question? So uh, has the gravity duel been looked at for this sparse SYK model? Like what are the gravity properties on the JT side? Like what effects can we observe for the introducing a sparse G uh, SYK model? Is there some literature on that? Oh, okay, so uh, the papers by uh, these people uh, discuss uh, gravity ideals, but uh, I, so I'm afraid we... I don't understand everything, but uh, maybe it's not as concrete as in the dense SYK case. I see, okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, Actually, uh, hi, Masaki. Yeah, it's a good, nice talk. Uh, Thank you. Uh, hi, this is Jungi. Uh, yeah. Hi. Actually, I had also the same question. So it's, uh, he also asked, but uh, here, uh, analytically, is it in the original SYK model, you can calculate the, this, uh, for example, the spectrum of the theory, like uh, this, uh, infinite tower of states can be evaluated. So here also, do you have the same spectrum or something different? You said it is maybe low, low rank is the same as SYK, but uh, this excited state is also similar. So that because uh, this uh, question would be related to the huge question, like holographic yeah, yeah. or what is the field content at all? Yeah. So. Uh... I hope it's the same, but uh, I uh, I myself don't have a I mean a clear explanation whether it should be the same or it should be a bit different. Uh, so it's a future problem, I think. Sorry, but uh, I expect that uh, they behave very similarly. The eigenstates from the, 
I mean, numerical uh, results of our uh, exact diagonalization calculation. And uh, my my reasoning for expecting uh, expecting a similar behavior is uh, this one. So if you uh, I mean if you draw the Feynman diagrams and take the averages over the realizations of the models, we expect similar behavior. If there is no other question or comment, then let's thank speak again. Thank you very much. And uh, we should go to the next talk.